microcomputers, mini computers, desktop computers, tower computers, laptops, rack servers, blade servers, the cloud, what do I pick? It can get extremely confusing around what sort of computer or server you should be getting at home. Maybe you've got a home lab. Maybe you're just playing around trying to learn some new tech. Maybe you just need a server to do something in your home. You know, a server essentially is going to be servicing something. It's got a purpose. Maybe you want to have a whole bunch of media, photos, movies, TV shows, home movies, and then devices across your network, your TV, your iPads can all access all of that. Maybe you wanna build a website, maybe building your own blog, your own site for all of your friends, your family. Whatever the purpose is, it can get a little bit confusing, overwhelming at the variety of servers or computers that are available. Do I get a small one? Do I get a large one? Do I get something that is in between? We talk about all things tech on this channel and if you are not subscribed, a lot of you are not, why don't you subscribe by clicking on the button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Now the other thing that you need to consider is once you have built your servers, let's say you have a whole pool of different types of servers, you have a network at home, you've got devices at home, maybe you've got a smart home, maybe you've got any other smart sort of devices, you've got all of this tech out there, how do you keep Keep track of this. How do you make sure that everything is running healthy? You're a busy person. I'm a busy person. We are needed in lots of places at the same time, but you can't be everywhere at once. And Pulseway understands that. This is a tool that you need to get for your IT management and your IT monitoring. So from a single intuitive dashboard, you can now oversee your servers, your workstations, and your virtual machines effortlessly. You can even perform critical tasks like restarting your servers, executing scripts, troubleshooting issues, all from the convenience of your smartphone. You don't just need your computer, you can do it from the palm of your hand. And something that I absolutely love is that you can actually set this thing up to send you real-time notifications of your hardware failures, low disk space, security threats. You can address those potential problems and minimize any downtime before they become a big issue. Knowing that Pulseway will prioritize security with advanced features including MFA or two-factor authentication, encryption, ransomware detection, and ensuring the protection of your sensitive data in a challenging environment. So now you can break free from the limitations of time and location. With Pulseway, you can enjoy a well-deserved vacation while maintaining complete control of all of your IT tech and infrastructure. Structure. There are stacks of IT professionals out there that are now actively using Pulseway. You need to be one of them. You can get an exclusive saving if you sign up to Pulseway. Down below, check the link and become better at managing your tech. So the first thing you need to do is have a think about what is the purpose of this thing. You know you need a server. You know you need a computer of some sort but why do you need it? What sort of software are you going to be running on it? A lot of these questions are going to then determine the hardware that you're gonna go and buy. Are you gonna be buying a small, medium or large? Well, a lot of this is irrelevant until you really understand what this thing is gonna be used for. Because if you're gonna be needing something that is pretty grunty, something that needs a bit of hard drive space, you wanna pump it with a lot of RAM, then sometimes a small little device may not be suitable. You may need to get something bigger. If you're gonna be running some really high-end graphics, rendering, you're gonna be doing some video editing, whatever it may be, then you may need to look at something even bigger, maybe like a rack server, whatever it is. So have a think about exactly what you're gonna use this for. Very common nowadays for you to go and have a computer and use it to build a whole bunch of virtual machines, a whole bunch of virtual servers. So if you're gonna be doing that and you wanna go and experiment and build a whole range of computers, then you probably do need to get something that is even more powerful and that can accommodate that. Once you have determined that, Think about the budget. How much are you willing to spend? Because you can get a computer for a hundred bucks, you get a computer for 10,000 bucks. That's a big spread. Are you really gonna spend $10,000 to just run a basic website? You maybe wanna build a domain controller, you wanna build a Docker lab. Is a hundred dollar computer gonna be able to do that? Don't know. What is your budget? How much are you prepared to spend? The next bit you gotta think about is the space, the physical space. Where are you going to be putting this server? Now in my case, I've got a home lab, I've got a rack, I've got a space where I have all of my gear sitting inside of it. 
You may or may not have something like this. Maybe you want to stick it on a cupboard, you want to put it in your garage, whatever the place is where you're going to put this device, this server, do you have enough space for it? The bigger the computer, the noisier it's going to be. The clunkier it's going to be, the more heat it's going to be generating. Next bit, think about the storage requirements. How much storage do you actually need? How much stuff, how much data are you going to be placing onto this computer? The more data you've got, the more storage you're going to need. So this is where you've got to think about, well, a small computer may not have a very big hard drive. A larger one may have a lot more. When you are deciding what server to get, don't think about what you need right now. Have a think about how much data you will need in the next six months, in the next 12 months, in the next five years. Do you really wanna be buying something now and then it's outdated in the next year because you've run out of the space? And not just space, but what if you wanted to build something a little bit more powerful in six months time, but you just don't have enough RAM, you don't have enough CPU now on this computer. So let's now have a look at some of the options. The first ones right here are your microcomputers, your mini computers. These little things are super efficient. They're tiny, they're compact. Some of them do not even have a fan, which means they are completely silent. They have got a whole bunch of ports on the front, on the back multiple USB ports, you can some of them, you can hook up multiple screens to them. You can start with a little Raspberry Pi. This thing is tiny. It has a micro SD port, and that's essentially where you have all of the data sitting. Now, do you wanna go and build a fully fledged Windows server on a Raspberry Pi? Probably not. You're probably gonna run a version of Linux that doesn't require a whole lot of grunt. I've got the Zimmer board, I've got some Intel NUX, I've even got a Mac Mini. All of these are great, and they are perfect if you just wanna run some basic things onto them. Now, most of these, yes, you can run Windows on some of them. You can run Linux. You can even run VMware's ESXi, or you can do Proxmox. You can do any of these virtualization technologies onto it and build lots of computers or virtual machines. So here is my lineup, Raspberry Pi 4. I've got two Intel NUCs, one being a i3, the other one being an i7. I've got an older Mac mini, a B-Link little computer. I've also got this thing called the Zimmer board, which is a great thing, a Protect Lee computer, which is a beast. And then finally, a HP Elite desk. And that covers up most of my mini computers. Some of them pretty powerful, but they're not as powerful as getting something bigger. From there, you can then look at a desktop or a tower. I mean, ultimately, any computer can be deployed as a server as long as the right software is running onto it, okay? That's something you've got to think about. But of course, with something that is a little bit bigger, you can have much better resources inside of it. You can put a lot more RAM. You can put maybe one or two CPUs into that. There's a lot more grunt. There's a much bigger motherboard. You can stick a lot more hard drives directly inside one of the bigger computers. Now you can even go for one of the more tower type of computers. In my case, I've got a tower server and this is even more grunty than just your standard desktops. Another option could be laptops. I mean, hey, you can build a server out of a laptop. You don't have to have a computer that is like a desktop style, right? You can actually use a laptop to deploy some server software onto it and then have the laptop storing all of the data, building your virtual machines, whatever it is, and that becomes the server in your space. Now, of course, the limitation with a laptop is very hard to upgrade laptops. Then you move into significantly bigger pieces of tech. And this is where we are talking about a rack server a big piece of tech. It's called a rack server because it sits in a rack. Now, these sorts of servers are really more high-end. They're a lot more high-powered. Commonly, you're gonna find these in an enterprise. In a business, they're gonna be running servers such as this. You could look at rack servers or blade servers. They sort of come in different configurations. You can get skinny ones. You can get ones that are slightly thicker and then even bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, some of these can get quite expensive, thousands of dollars tens of thousands of dollars, it's really up to you how much you want to spend. But the nice thing about something like this is when you open this thing up, there is a plethora of options available for you to pump this thing with a lot of RAM, dual CPUs, and you can just do a whole lot with it. Some of these have got a lot of slots available where you can stick a lot of hard drives into it. 
you deploy them with certain RAID configurations, you have redundancy. On the back, you've got redundancy from a power perspective. You've got more than one power. You've got a lot more network points. You maybe even have options around fiber channel if you wanna run fiber channel connections. So my primary rack server is a HP ProLiant DL360, and this one is a Gen 10, and it is a beast. I've got it pumped full of RAM, and I've got a whole bunch of hard drives in it as well. So this may be right for you, may also be a little bit overkill. It's a little bit hard to put a rack server just on the ground. I mean, yes, you could put it on a cupboard. You could put it on top of a table, but really these things are intended to go inside of a rack of some sort. But the other thing is that they are going to be noisy, right? When they are turned on, they're not quiet, they're not silent. It's gonna use a lot more electricity, which means your power bills may go up and it's gonna be running hotter. So sometimes you wanna put it in a space that's a little bit cooler. Micro, mini computers, desktop computers, laptops, server racks. What about the cloud? AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. They're the three big ones. And these have got environments where you can deploy servers in the cloud. You then go and deploy a specific type of server. You can boost it up with a lot of resources and then you just generally pay like a monthly fee. The nice thing about having it in the cloud is that if in future you need to give it more resources, you can do that quite easily. What about if you don't need that? You can reduce the RAM. You can give it a slower CPU. So it gives you that flexibility of being able to scale up and scale down without too much problem. Because a physical computer, well, you have to go and physically go and buy more hardware if you need to upgrade it. Now, the nice thing about the cloud is you now don't have the physical space requirements. You don't need to have to think about where you're gonna be putting it. It's not gonna be using any electricity. It's not gonna be noisy. No one's gonna complain because it just looks ugly. It's on the cloud. It's in cyberspace. So if you're hoping to know, well, what option is best for you, it's up to you. You've got to consider your budget, you've got to consider the space, you've got to consider future growth, and you've really got to consider, well, what is this thing for in the first place? As long as you know all of that, you can then put together a good plan to get yourself the right computer, the right server for your home. And also I release videos every single week on tech. We talk about all things tech on this channel. So to make sure that you stay up to date, click on that button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Until then, we'll see you on the next video.